I'm going to tell you exactly what happens in this video so you don't get lost and confused. I start off not liking this pedal, the Woodrow, but by the end of the video, I love it. How, you may ask? Well, I guess you'll have to wait and see. You shouldn't think, ugh, Alex sure changes his mind a lot. Who knows what he thinks? Ah, this is what you should think. Wow, Alex is trustworthy. Alex is honest. Alex will pick me up from the airport. Alex will help me move. In fact, I think Alex is coming by Memorial Day to cook for my whole family. Wow, all those are true. Johnny, roll the tape. I finally understand why no one's using the Woodrow because it shines a huge mirror on your own biases. It says, hey, Alex, you said you like tweeds. Well, here's a tweed pedal. You said you like it, don't you? And you're playing, you're like, I did. I said I love tweeds, and this is a tweed. You're right. I'm supposed to love this pedal. I've played a tweed deluxe in person, and it sounds great. But a miked tweed deluxe, which is what this accurately emulates, just like all their other pedals. I'm like, actually, I don't know if I like the sound of a miked tweed deluxe. I think I like the sound of being in a room with a tweed deluxe. Guitarists are hard to figure out, aren't we? We say we want something, a manufacturer makes it, we say, here's that thing you asked for. Here's that Klon pedal you asked for. And then we go, eh, that's not what we wanted. That's not really what we wanted. Kind of derivative, isn't it? And then they say, okay, great. Here's a brand new thing, a crazy thing you've never seen before. Reverb with distortion. Here's a crazy preamp pedal. It's a little expensive, but you've definitely never seen it before. Some guitarists go, cool, but most of us go, Eh, uh, too new, too different. Reminds me of that Simpsons episode where the owner of Itchy and Scratchy Animation Studio is doing focus groups and these kids don't know what they want. So you want a realistic, down-to-earth show that's completely off the wall and swarming with magic robots. That's right. oh, yeah. Yeah. Good. And also, you should win things by watching. It's a funny commentary on the wisdom of crowds, right? The UAFX Woodrow is a personification of that mindset. Just like with Voxes, every guitarist will swear up and down, Tweed Deluxe, man, that's it. So Universal Audio goes, great. Here's a pedal that literally sounds like a Tweed Deluxe. 400 bucks. It's a Tweed in a box. And everyone played it. Everyone said, yep, yeah, that does sound like a Tweed in a box. And no one uses it. I haven't, I've seen one person have it on their board. It's so weird. I thought to myself, in an egotistical way, I know this pedal better than other people, and I will use it the way I've used the Iridium and the way that I've used all these other like forgotten pedals, and I'll use it and I'll find great tones. And then I turned it on, and boy was I wrong. Now, if any of you have seen Jim Lil's latest video on the room sound, the elusive room sound, how's it sound in the room? His whole point, and he's right, is that the room and the sound can never be heard by anyone but you. You are the only person that hears the room sound because eventually you'll have to mic it. If you want to transport that sound somewhere, it's got to be mic'd. And that's what I think the biggest problem with the UAFX Woodrow is, is that we all thought we were going to be in the room, in the room with a Tweed Deluxe. But what we were given was a perfectly mic'd Tweed Deluxe. This pedal should come as a cautionary tale. The tone you're chasing in your head can only be heard by you. And everyone else is gonna have to hear a mic'd version of that. Like there is something you're chasing. There's something we're all chasing as musicians and guitarists especially. What is that sound? What is that sound? I hear something in my head. How do I get it out? The only way to get it out is with one of these. The only way to give that sound to someone else, to say, hey, here's a sound. 
you got to use one of these. So what is the point of a room sound, a sound in your head, if it doesn't exist anywhere but for you? Now that I got new strings, let's play this thing. Here's the three things that I think of when I hear Tweed Deluxe. I hear a pristine, luscious clean. I hear a great edge of breakup sound. And then I hear like a rip and rock and the amp is breaking. Why are you playing it sound? Those are the three sounds, right? This can do those sounds. And yet I'm still like, is that what I actually wanted? It makes me question what I wanted, right? So that was a 15 watt Celestian Blue. It's like a little bit darker. That's the first speaker. And in all of these UAFX pedals, the first speaker is always the best. But that gives it a very nice clean with just a little, there's a little fuzz on top, but it's okay. That's a great clean sound, right? And I'm using a little bit of room reverb from Valhalla. I'll show you why I'm not using that room reverb. It's great room reverb, but it's very specific. do that clean sound. Let's get that edge of breakup kind of sound. Shout out John. Now we switched it to the high input channel. We don't have any boost on. I switched to the stock speaker so it's a little bit brighter so we can roll back. And you can see like, okay, like, yeah, that's definitely what a Tweed Deluxe sounds like when it's ripping, but technically the sound of a edge of breakup kind of tweed. So why doesn't that appeal to me? I know that's what it is. I know in my mind, like, well, that's what you wanted. But for some reason, I'm like, I guess that's not what I wanted. But let's change speakers. Sometimes that's the problem. So now this is a greenback. A greenback, uh, 1x12, a lot more mid-focus, and it can handle distortion and overdrive a lot better. Let's try this. <laughs> Now let's try to use that boost. There's another thing that this pedal does that really is frustrating. When you adjust the volume input, right? Mic input, instrument input, the volumes. It really changes the output of the pedal. And I wish that wasn't the case. I wish they had an auto leveler for the most part. It doesn't make sense to have that where it's like, I'm, I'm going back and forth. I'm changing the input level on my 
audio interface just because they want a different tone. On the Dream 65, that doesn't matter that much to me because you're not fiddling and trying to find tones by moving two knobs, right? These two knobs here, they like will dictate your tone. And so you have to move them a lot. And so you're gonna have just huge volume changes based on the tone you're trying to chase. Now, when you have an amp, oh, hey, that's part of the game. That's, that's the rules. But when you have a pedal and there are no rules, you can create the rules you want. There's no reason to put that limitation in there or that like effect. You could have an auto leveler, right? Like it, there's no reason you can't, it's all digital. Okay, that's my first rant. Let's see if this sounds better. That's a little bit better. what I'm trying to say here, right? The average guitar player would probably want those three sounds, a great clean, a great overdriven, and then a falling apart. We'll get to falling apart in a second. And it shouldn't be this difficult to get those sounds. I know there's a lot of degrees in between, but it should be very easy. At least what I would have preferred is it'd be much easier to get those sounds right out of the gate. I've had this pedal for like two months. And it's just now, I'm like, oh, okay, this is where we're looking to get. It's, it's requiring so much of my effort to just get the sounds that I thought would be pretty straightforward. That's rant number two. using the Marshall 4x12 with vintage 30s or V30s rather. That's a really great sound. I like that sound. I want that sound. That's a great sound. And that one's pretty, that one's the only easy one to get. Push everything up, everything full. And now you got a great sound. And the cool thing about this is that it cleans up even at this crazy level, just like a tweed amp would, right? Now it doesn't have like tons of clarity. Let's turn up tone a little bit. Do you hear that hiss, that fuzz? It's unavoidable in this situation. My volume's on three right now, which is so crazy. Me back to like the signature tone of the UAFX pedals. The UAFX amp pedals have this like crinkle, this crispiness, this crackle. Here, listen. See that crackle? There's a crackle happening. So 
So that crackle is across all the UAFX pedals, and I guess it's kind of it's kind of like speaker cry a little bit. It is authentic, but did I need that? Did anyone ask for that? Like, you know what I really miss when I'm recording amps? It's the crackle. The crackle is what I'm going for. So here's rant number three, the thing that I get really frustrated about when it's uh, recreations of something digitally. There is no reason to include the limitations of the analog hardware into what you have with digital. And what I would prefer is if something's digital, you get rid of the things that the inconveniences of the analog gear, but keep all the things that made it special, that made it unique. Do I need speaker cry? Probably not. If that's what that is, or speaker breakup, it can be distracting. It can aff- I mean, it's very signature. It's a very specific thing and you can't cut it out. So to solve this, Let's throw this into a York Audio Basement IR, and then we'll actually compare the basement simulations here, okay? This is the York Audio Basement Mix 1, which is also SM57. Probably need some more high end. Let's try that. If you find that signature crackle of the UAFX pedals is not to your liking, throw it on a third party IR. So let's try the most recent one I got from them, which is a Princeton 1x10. Let's compare it to our good old friend, Mr. Strymon Iridium. On the Iridium, I have the IR loader turned off, so we're going into the same Princeton IR right now. To get a tweed sound on the Iridium, you boost the middle. Let's just go for a nice clean sound. Pretty close there, right? I mean, like, if I was playing those clean sounds, could you say, wow, that's a clean tweed? Or would you say clean sound? Or would you probably say clean fender sound? Clean strat sound? This is why, like, comparing tweed sounds is kind of tricky because you would never know it's a tweed, right? When I have when I have it on that clean sound, you're not like tweed, you're just like clean. When I have it pushed all the way up, you're like, wow, distorted, not 
sounds like a tweed. And when I have it on edge of breakup, you're like, cool, edge of breakup sound. And that's like kind of the interesting thing about a tweed. It's almost like a very, it's only for guitarists. Like only we know that it's great, but does the crowd know? Absolutely not. Like does your rest of your band know? Maybe, but only because you told them and brought it in. So look at my tweed. Again, like these kind of comparisons, just grain of salt kind of stuff here. Like, like, yeah, there are differences, but like, do the differences actually matter? Now let's do an overdriven sound. character when you're pushing into it but it's a character that you might not like right do you really want that kind of compression that flubbiness i love it but it's not for everyone i know what some of you might be asking like can it handle other pedals as a pedal platform let's find out we're going to turn off the ir simulator and go back to the speaker sims so the key to having a good pedal platform is finding the great clean sound right and the, and the blue speaker the first one is is all is a really good one for that right it, it handles distortion well second choice might be the greenback a little more mid focused right might even want to go for the marshall here much more scooped right so if you have a more mid focus guitar That might be the move, but a lot of bass end on that. I still like the uh, blue. We found our good clean sound. What does it sound like with a little bit of compression? Little bit of EP booster. I'm running it at 18 volts. Because I know everyone's like, 18 volts is better. I'm like, all right, I'll do that. <laughs> With a sparkle drive, which is a tube screamer clone. Still got it, <laughs> sounds good. How about a little more overdrive? This is the revival drive. So it can handle drive, but you can hear that. You can hear that sag, you can hear that compression. A little bit of that's from the revival drive, but most of that's from the Woodrow. The Woodrow's like a rectifier is like taking that, you know, signal and going, whoa, take it easy, take it easy. Modeled, of course. So you really can't do high gain into that. If you want a pedal platform, you do a bunch of high gain stuff, this is not the pedal for you. This is with a little bit of chorus from the Vision, from Joyo. <laughs> course okay right so it can handle like if you are using it as a pedal platform for like low to medium gain or clean to medium gain you're great you're in a good spot and it gives you a good kind of vibe 
Now let's go into the built-in effects of the Woodrow. First is the room. This is room at 50. o'clock is room all the way up here's what's silly about this room knob you got a whole knob it's dedicated to one thing room and there's not a lot you can do with it and it's not like Universal Audio doesn't have awesome room sounds. I mean, in their Spark uh, introductory one, they have like the, the Motown room sound that you can add. Like they could have added that. They could I mean, they could have added a bigger room. I feel like that's just such a short room. It's such a niche. It's such a narrow sound. And they got a whole knob dedicated with just one knob for that. And that's all it does. It adds that kind of room sound that not many guitarists will find useful. It, that is crazy to me. Like you're giving a one sixth of the turnable features, tweakable features to, to feed to a sound that you probably won't use. Rant number four over. And now I added the Valhalla room sound back. <laughs> Let's go through these speakers real quick because there's like two that I like, two that are interesting, and two that I'm like, I'm, what would I use this? So you've heard the blue. We'll just go through real quick again. This is the JP Stock Jensen P12R speaker that came with it. A lot more shriller, a lot harsher. You'll see. Like, it can be cool. So pull back the tone on your guitar, usually help. Push up the mic volume, and that adds a little bit more low end. pull down the tone. This is the greenback. Four by twelve. Great for a lead sound. Let's give it a big lead sound. pristine one. Beautiful clean sound. And 
the last is a Fender 1x12 with a vintage JBL. That one's okay, right? It says bright hi-fi mid-rangey. I don't mind it. So you're thinking now Alex hates this pedal. I actually love this pedal, but it's just not what I was expecting. And it makes me want a real tweed. It makes me want to put a tweed in the room because I'm like, okay, like I get it. That's what it sounds like mic'd, but I want a tweed. I want one in my room. And I probably want this one, which is a vintage sound, their tweed. Um, it's only like 1700. It's a lot of money, but not that much for what you get. And lastly, let's talk about these boosts real quick and how like kind of everything relates. So on an old tweed, you had two inputs. You had mic input and you had instrument input. And then you could jumper them so that you could use both uh, knobs of instrument and microphone to like augment the tone. The tone also was very interactive. Obviously higher the tone, the more treble, but also higher the tone, the more gain and the more overdrive. So it was kind of like this, you'd have to like massage these three different knobs to get these crazy tones and you jumpered the channels together as well. Now. These are already internally jumper digitally, so you don't have to worry about that. And on top of that, there were two inputs, high input, low input. Obviously, low input meant lower gain, high input meant higher gain. Um, and like it would obviously like send higher signal or lower signal depending on what input you would use. The boosts change that. So, so the top one, the KP3K, that's like an 80s delay, rack mount delay. That one puts it in the low input uh, channel, but the other two are the high input channel. Right now we're in the low input channel, no boost, and using the Celestion Blue. cool sound. You, it's almost like a fuzz pedal. This is the stock. Cool sound, right? But very unique, very niche, like fits right in there. Now we're on the EP3 tape echo preamp boost. This also uses the high input.
that's like much beefier, much lower end. Here's how to use the knobs together in conjunction and how they kind of all affect each other. It's a nice little dance you get to do. Turning up instrument volume. Turns up more of treble. And it also kind of gives you more treble gain. When you turn up instrument volume like this, a little bit lower gain and then when you turn up tone like this the tone as like a presence knob with gain the instrument as a treble gain and then as the microphone as bass gain now we're kind of getting closer to like what um, these knobs can do together let's say on the greenback speaker it's a lot of bass there right so we're just adding some instrument gain. But a little bit too bright, so let's turn down the tone. backing off the volume but if you back off the volume you probably need to bring the tone back in so that's where like just you have to do a little dance with your hands on the volume the tone on your guitar I'm gonna add a little bit of boost and I'm gonna get a loop going so you can see like how you can transition in and out of these tones just right here. This is funny, as I'm playing this pedal more for this video, I'm like, you know what? I really like this pedal. It's a unique pedal, it's a specific pedal. It reminds me of the Revival Trem, where it's like, this is the tone you're getting. You're literally getting just this tone. Like, it can kind of be versatile, but it's really just for this. I like it because it's not like every other, I mean, like, if once you get one blackface Fender sound, like, do you need two? Like, no, like, one is plenty. 
So you don't need to double up on that. And once you get a good Marshall sound, it's like, do you need two? Like, no, you got it. It's done. It's done. You already fixed it. You fixed that problem. So the thing that I'm interested now in my life, there's, well, there's two things. One, I know I need to practice more and play more. It's obvious. But two, I want to find tones that I wouldn't have found before. Not the perfect tone, but tones I never would have thought of. I'm changing all my rants. So what is that? I did four rants. This pedal, even with all its warts, even with all the flaws it has, I'm actually loving this pedal now, just from this video. That's a powerful thing, changing your mind on the fly. Now let's put it in front of my Blues Junior. <laughs> Speaker sim turned off, and I just have it on the low input channel. I'm going straight into the Blues Junior. I know that like the four cable method, you go into the FX loop and it like doesn't color the sound. I'm not that worried about it because it's a digital modeler and I'm not chasing like a tweed tone through my Blues Junior. I'm chasing a cool sound, all right? So if it colors and it pushes the preamp tubes of my Blues Junior, it doesn't matter to me. I just wanna know if it sounds cool. <laughs> Awesome. It adds like a cool kind of sheen to it, right? Let's try the high input channel. I think that's from the booth. Now we're on the EP Booster Boost. That would sound good with this is a sparkle drive sparkle drive but the blend is at 50 right now i love this sound A little bit of deco saturation and then a little bit of uh, tape chorus too. I think they marketed this pedal wrong. 
This is a fuzz pedal. It's like a vintage pedal for your amp. As a standalone pedal, and I mean, it was cool. It was getting good sounds, but like, this is fun. I mean, look at my head. Look at my hair. I was rocking. That sag, because like, listen. Um... That's the rest of the chain with nothing else on it. That's cool. That's fun. I like that. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. So, all right, this is a vintage pedal. This is just like the Deco. It adds some vintage flavor because the Dream kind of has some sag. The Ruby, I didn't notice any um, significant, but this does. But here's what else I'm noticing. Everyone's going to think I'm crazy for saying this. I can feel the latency when I play through the UAFX pedals. I can. You're going to tell me I can't. And I'm telling you, you're wrong. I can feel it. I can feel the latency. I'm not crazy. I see all these forums like, you can't feel it. I'm like, bro, I am telling you I can feel it. Like, I know it's there. Like, I, I can feel it in my hands. I'm not crazy. At first I thought it was the computer, but I had the buffer set super low. And then when I was turning it on, turning it off, I could feel it. It's like, and if you look at the audio test, I don't know, who, but look at the audio test. There's like a significant amount of latency. Not enough to ruin a recording, but enough that you, I guess, a guitarist who plays a lot, like me, can feel it. I can feel that. Conversely, the Iridium. I don't feel any latency there. Now that could also be the sag. That might be the sag. Okay, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe that's the sag. There is something happening there. So something to be, again, it's something to be aware of. It's not, I'm not saying it's bad. I like the pedal. I'm allowed to say these things. I'm not crazy. This is a good pedal. It's hard to use. And that's why you don't see anyone using it. You, there are no videos on this pedal online. I've seen maybe a couple people using it on their pedal boards. I can understand why, because it's a very specific tone. And if you don't like that tone, sorry, man, there, there's not a lot else for you. It's this tone or it's this tone, like times a hundred. There is a good clean tone, but it's not like you don't have a good clean tone. There's a lot of good clean tones to be found. Whether that's the Iridium, a Walrus, a Roland Cube, a, you know, the Dream 65. There's, you have a lot of choices there. So really what you're buying one of these pedals for is like, well, what's the overdrive sound like? And that is what the overdrive sounds like. And that is very cool, but I can understand why some people don't like it. I mean, I didn't like it until recently. I didn't like it until like very recently. When Retschel, Tim Pierce, and Matthias Asado went to Universal Audio Studio or some fancy studio, and they were doing the side-by-sides to the other pedals. Is this the pedal or is this the amp? Pedal of the amp. Like an A-B comparison. They spent like a minute on the Woodrow. And I know why. Because they probably didn't like it that much. And there's something about being in the room with the tweed turned up that you're like, man, that's very cool. You're riding the harmonics. You're riding your volume knob. And to capture that in a pedal is impossible. You wouldn't be able to. Just like Jim Lil said, the room sound, the sound in your head, like the sound that you hear when you're standing next to your amp, no one else gets to hear that except for you. And that's a good thing. I mean, that's just for you. That's something very special. Only you get to experience the way the sound waves hit you when you're playing your guitar at whatever volume it is. That's a cool thing. But that's not what this pedal is going to do. This pedal is not going to give you the tweed sound that you hear in your head. It's going to give you the tweed sound that you hear on a record. If you want to spend $400 on an amp in a box pedal between this, the Ruby, and the Dream 65, I don't think this should be the first pedal that you get, right? You'll probably want the Dream or the Ruby for various reasons, which I covered in these videos here. Check it out. Mm -hmm. 